On the face of it, the all-second division clash between Leicester City and Shrewsbury Town might have looked a little predictable and unremarkable. But that was ignoring the total commitment of both teams. Your commentator, Barry Davis. Velvet Street offers a wet and windy afternoon, although the atmosphere is certainly warm enough in the ground, which seems to be full of balloons, by the way. It also offers the only captain goalkeeper still surviving in the cup and a player manager who in the end decided not to pick himself. Mark Warrington finds himself once again with the same collection of players as Leicester City are unchanged for the sixth consecutive match. The last five have all been here at Filbert Street and every one of them was won. But Graham Turner, the player manager of Shrewsbury Town, decided in the end that he would play 19-year-old Bernard McNally in his side in his place. So his team is exactly that which beat Ipswich in the last round, which means that Jake King, the skipper, has been passed fit and takes his place at number two. The wind in the main is blowing from right to left as we look. And a great burst from Leicester City, both players and supporters right at the start. The referee is Dave Richardson of Great Harwood in Lancashire. And so much on offer for these two teams. A bit of pushing. He kicks Shrewsbury's way. Shrewsbury's certainly got plenty of height forward from Biggins, Bates and Atkins. OK to find one. Bates coming in. And it was his head at the end. After the flick had come from Atkins. May. And that's the view from the stand behind Mark Waddington's goal. Young. But Linex had come in. He gets a second chance. Here's Young. That fell kindly for them. And a corner. Okay. And put it out. Taken by Ian Wilson. It's curling in a lot. The goalkeeper's in trouble and May scores. It really was a superbly struck corner and the classic defender's goal and a set piece. He came in, met it solidly, after the goalkeeper had lost the flight of the ball. Well, Jock Wallace, the Leicester City manager, said he wanted an early goal to open the match out, and he's got just that. Goal coming in the sixth minute. Shrewsbury aside, who've never been beyond the sixth round in the FA Cup. They won this round three years ago and lost in a replay at home to Wolves, having got the away draw. That was the year they beat Manchester City. Bates following on! And Wallington's bravery saving Leicester City. And that really must have hurt him on the neck. But they've been vulnerable to the uh, ball in the air so much, Leicester, in these opening 20 minutes and more. And suddenly Bates then was free coming in on the left, and the goalkeeper came out to challenge him and seemed to take the brunt on the head and the test on the back of the neck. Substitute is Jim Melrose, but a forward player. And Jock Wallace is the figure there, making his way into the 18-yard area. The Leicester City manager. Well, this is the incident again. Curling ball that came through. Look at Bates here, and the goalkeeper committed and took the full brunt. 
on the right the goalkeeper in possession on the left the man who fears he might have to take over but the fears are slowly subsiding header this is McNally and Kelly got a shoulder in no play on says the referee oh dear and Kelly for the second time Give every impression then of being in a slalom backing away now and it comes down to Bates who puts it in Chick Bates it's his third goal in the FA Cup competition and predictably, the result of pressure in the air, the long ball knocked down when it came back to Bates. He hit it first time to equalise with 38 minutes of the first half gone. Not, of course, allowing for what must have been a good five minutes delay. Johnson. Atkins. Look at that for competition. Chick Bates scored the only goal against Port Vale, then against Burnley in the third and fourth rounds, and scores here in the sixth. Meantime, Atkins goes into the referee's book. And Turner on the bench. Young. May. Tong. Higgins. Bates, Atkins, cross, it wouldn't come down for him. Johnson, looking again for Chick Bates. And Warrington in all sorts of trouble and turned away by Williams as Atkins came in. And really, how long can Leicester continue with a goalkeeper who's hobbling and in no position to cover the ground? Out by May, only to cross Bates, Kelly, and he gets the punch to it, to Wellington, and he tries the punch again, and it goes all the way. And Wellington with a face of dejection, Kelly saying now, surely he's got to come off. And Biggins' goal puts Shrewsbury into a 2-1 lead. But all as a result of the fact that Mark Wellington clearly was in no position to carry on. And indeed, he's now coming to the touchline, a very forlorn figure. Got to the first punch, tried to punch again at the second when, in normal circumstances, he would have made a catch. And Wellington comes off trying to hold back his real feelings of the situation and he's getting some tremendous applause and the game restarts with Alan Young in goal for Leicester City again it's a Leicester free kick May has come forward, as has uh, O'Neill. Here's O'Neill. Now Lineker. And Leicester putting on the pressure as much as they possibly can. 
Put out by May, who leads the counter immediately. Lineker, Wilson. Stirring stuff from the home team. And here's May. Hit Griffin. Oh, his back pass has gone in! And an own goal. Makes it 2-2. Larry May getting all the congratulations. But it was the other number five who scored. Colin Griffin putting past his own goalkeeper. 2-2, and we played three minutes of time on uh, Mr Richardson's watch to allow for the stoppages, notably, of course, to Mark Wallington. Oh, and a bit of a fisticuffs going on between Kelly and McNally. Young made it look very good and they were challenging Bates because they didn't like Bates' challenge on Young and the referee seemingly having to protect Bates but now goes away for a quiet word. There was a moment then when it looked as though Young had come too far forward but in fact he did it very smoothly. But Bates becomes the second man to go into Mr Richardson's book. Young, the least concerned among the Leicester players. Peak. Wilson. Foul by King. by Bates just a prod fall from Peak and no more oh he's made it work he seemed to push to get there in the first place but his reactions were very quick when the opportunity came to him and the end of a remarkable first half packed with incident including four goals Two bookings and a bad injury to Mark Wallington, which certainly cost one of the goals, at least, that Shrewsbury scored. They were one down to Larry May, came back to lead 2-1, but an own goal makes it 2-2 at half-time. So it's a substitute, Jim Melrose, who uh, gets the second half underway. No oh, one is tempted to say the battle recommences, but certainly the first half fiercely competitive. Here's Lineker. And they've just made the front row of the upper tier. Nally to cross, a little fortunately. Nally's tried to find the gap and might still. Young come forward and was sent up in the air and came down to earth pretty hard. He came to collect it in a fairly nonchalant manner, but as McNally went in. McNally was right underneath the goalkeeper and sent him spinning up in the air to land very hard indeed. And I don't think he knows too much about where he is at the moment. And Jock Wallace himself, the former goalkeeper. I just think that uh, there can't be many afternoons when they've taken as much stick as this. And Steve Linux is the player without shirt. And it looks as though... There is to be a second change, and Jock Wallace, as I was about to say, obviously well aware that he kept going with Mark Wallington, and it cost Leicester City. And 
doesn't want to make the same error twice. It's a little hard, I know that observation, but I'm afraid it's true. He seemed to hit his head pretty hard when he came down. And so, Steve Lynex getting a chance to have a good feel of the ball. Third goalkeeper that Leicester have had this afternoon. And Leicester, of course, now down to ten men. And the roar now from the crowd is that Alan Young is back on the field to play in his old role of centre-forward. May. No real chance for Norris. And Jock Wallace on his feet as well. And the referee coming to talk to John McVeigh. We're going to have yet another change in goal. Alan Young is returning to the tour, and Steve Linex goes back with a number seven shirt. permutation that Leicester had to use in the, sec in the second part of the first half. Timmy Williams to take the free kick. Peak, 9x. Marrows, yes! celebration going on because the man who was in goal until only a few seconds ago is the man who supplied the cross there he is Steve Linex other spectators have come on at the other end to congratulate Alan Young in fact was a spectator in that incident himself but Melrose has given Leicester a 3-2 lead minute of the match. Uh, with so many changes, timings have become only a basis for negotiation. Jim Melrose, a substitute, puts the home side back in front with what is his ninth goal of the season. Kelly. Griffin and again Melrose well, they've got plenty of power but uh, not too much accuracy three, Shrewsbury two. And here's Melrose with a good turn, and Lineker! Really fine move. And 
Schalke brings up perhaps the biggest wall so far. Leicester City now with real breathing space. But it was Kelly who played the ball through, and what a good ball it was. Mo Rose who turned on it swiftly, and when it just ran away for a second, Lineker followed up to give Leicester their fourth goal of the afternoon. It makes it a dozen for him this season. And I think it makes it that Leicester City will appear in the semi-finals of this season's FA Cup competition. At least. Tom. Williams across. He did well to come across because he left the man in doing so. There's nobody else to cover. corner it's curling a lot oh well taken oh, he looks very happy in the role Satisfied a shouting that we want five. Linux. Williams. Didn't want to take it on his left. His peak. He doesn't mind. in the middle, so is Melrose cross, Melrose and uh, a free kick will be given and seems we want to make a substitution and it's really no surprise that King is the player to be substituted but they brought on John Dungworth the striker replacing Defender. Bates, Griffin, Wilson, Linux, Lineker has recovered, Melrose is in the middle, and scores! scored but he has Lineker calling for it was given it where he wanted it and his cross was met by Melrose and it eluded Bob Ward. so the seventh goal of a remarkable match Tom, cross, Biggins, so much has happened since Biggins gave Shrewsbury a hope of a semi-final place. Bates Atkins stays down as Lineker comes away Fryer out to the left he probably won't need him he needed rather more in fact well, whatever else happens in this FA Cup competition this will be a match long remembered that I'm sure 
seven goals, Leicester starting in tremendous style with a goal after six minutes. It all seemed to have gone away from them when they lost Mark Wellington and conceded two goals. An own goal put them back on course, and in the second half, their considerable strength of character and resilience has taken them through to the semi-final with a convincing 5-2 victory. Well, personally, I can't remember anything happening quite like that. Three goalkeepers in one goal in one game, two of them injured, one decisively, and all that goal mouth excitement somehow inspiring a 5-2 win for their team. Barry Davis investigates. Mark, I think the first question must be, what do you think of the other goalkeepers? Um, well, they kept a clean sheet. They didn't concede any, so uh, on today's performance, they're two goals better than me. Actually, Stevie and I were having a little chat after the game, and uh, as, as Mark says, we both kept a clean sheet, so if, uh, if he had come straight off, it would have been, might have been 5-0. Did you enjoy it? Oh, really. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Were you upset when they brought Adam back to replace you? Uh, not really, because uh, I seen their front line, they was a bit bigger than me, and the way they kept pumping the balls, I thought, well, I'll get back up front. Easy to be wise after the event, but should you have come off then? Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> Definitely. And as it turned out, <laughs> yes, I should have come off straight away. But it was unfortunate that in the five minutes we were just seeing how it was going to stand up, they scored two goals. Um, and then I, I, I think there are about 30,000 people saying I should come off. <laughs> and who's going to play and go in the semi final? I'll have me off. <laughs> 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 no doubt about that. Well, well done, Lester, and I think you'll agree they deserve their win. <laughs>